I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. This is Matt Twin City and what about to another review. The first of three reviews, at least, that should be posted today. Uh, thanks to Nick Rosencrans, who sent in a very generous PayPal donation, who wanted reviews and commentaries for the three Sam Raimi Spider-Man films. Now, by the time you see this, I should have those three commentaries done and uploaded. Because I figure I'll do those, then I'll do the three reviews. If anyone ever wants to send in a, do a request donation to the channel, my PayPal link will be down below, as well as my Patreon link. And you can request a review, topic, commentary, whatever you feel like. Again, the links will be down in the info box. Thank you once again, Nick. So we get to the first Sam Raimi Spider-Man film. Came out 2002. Spider-Man film development for years upon years. Canon Films at one point was going to do Spider-Man with Albert Pion, the director of Cyborg and Nemesis, among other films. And there's all sorts of stories what that would have been. For example, one point where he would be an actual spider because Golden Globus didn't know what the hell Spider-Man was. There was a point that James Cameron was going to do it with perhaps Leonardo DiCaprio as the lead. There was even a point that James Cameron wanted to do an R-rated Spider-Man with perhaps Michael Bean as Sandman and Lance Henriksen as Electro and they'd be the villains, which I would love to have seen that, honestly, in retrospect. I really would love to have seen that. Michael Bean, Lance Henriksen, and I like Leonardo DiCaprio. I like him more than to be or not to be McCryer. And, okay, Sam Raimi, I can see he's a fan of the Spider-Man comics. Maybe it's to the point where we're both Spider-Man fans, but we see Spider-Man in a different light because of the era that we read of Spider-Man comics. Obviously, people who read Ultimate Spider-Man, which I never did. They view the character differently than me, who read the Spider-Man comics mainly from the 80s and 90s. Whether it be Spider-Man fight, you know, maybe some of the 70s. Like, the 70s, 80s, 90s Spider-Man comics is what I remember the most. For other people, it's going to be different time periods. So, while I think of Peter Parker, I think of a normal guy... An extraordinary situation, kind of like a John McClane. Well, a little bit, a little bit nerdier than that, to be fair. But just the guy who's like a wisecracker, smart ass. He's a regular guy, but he just happens to have this stuff. But he's got a good heart to him. He's a decent person. Loves his aunt, Aunt May. Believes in the moral code of great power, great. With great power comes great responsibility. And Sam Raimi, it's almost as if he saw a 50s ideal with the acting and character characteristics, but then put it in a 2000s aesthetic. That, because if I want to give merits to the film, I can. The costume, 
Well done costume. I would say the best costume of any of the Spider-Man movies. Any of them. Him utilizing Spidey sense. I like the way it's done. The slow-mo in the hallway where you get to see like the paper airplane and all this stuff. I thought that was a nice job. Which thankfully I thought they did a nice job utilizing Far From Home. I just go, well, why did it take so long? And are they going to conveniently forget about that later? Who knows? But I like the way it was done at the end of Far From Home. But, you know, okay. I enjoyed the actress who played Aunt May. I enjoyed J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. When I think of the Spider-Man comics, J. Jonah, J. Jonah, I picture what J.K. Simmons did. I guess to start off, like, I grew up reading Spider-Man comics a lot. Of the comics I read growing up as a kid, it would be some Punisher comics, later on Ninja Turtle comics, Preacher comics of that nature, and especially a lot of Spider-Man comics. And then funny enough, after the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, I kind of lost my interest in reading Spider-Man comics. In a weird way, the films killed my interest in reading the comics. I, I know that's a bold thing to say, and I still enjoy the character, but it seemed like after those movies, my interest in the character waned a tremendous amount. And I haven't read really any comments in, I mean, the occasional one or two off, but not a heavy reader of comments for years and years and years. But I remember a one or two issue Spider-Man comment where he faces terror named Fire Lord. And people are like, oh, you can't do is impossible. Oh, yeah, watch me. And this mystical, like, Cos no, cosmic is the word. Cosmic figure, all powerful, that everyone thought would whip Spider Man's ass, but Spider Man kicked his ass. And no one thought he could do it. Or the issue when he. Nothing could stop the juggernaut. And he threw everything at the juggernaut. He just wouldn't stop. But you're doing the best that he can. You know, those were stories that appealed to me. And it seemed like, okay, this is a guy. He has your know, quips and wisecracks and smart ass rem remarks, but he's someone I can relate to. Toby Maguire, or as I call him, Dopey McCryer, I can't. I can't relate to the guy. I maybe because Sam Raimi was more in touch with the original original comics. Which, you know, the time period it was made, you know, the way it was written and the look. I can understand that. I did that just a different preference. But to me for I would I would have preferred one who was more in tone with the eighties, nineties Spider Man. Or even on tone character wise of the 90s Spider Man cartoon. Which I still think is the best iteration of Spider Man, although he doesn't get to punch a lot, which is one of my few critiques of that cartoon. Because you don't really see him punching things because of standards and practices, which was stupid. Fucking dumb. But at least his Spider Man does punch, which Dizzy Spider Man doesn't for some stupid reason. But I really like Tom Holland. Part of me thinks if you put Tom Holland into these movies, although I don't mind Spider-Man 2, which I'll get to that. But if you put Tom Holland in these movies, I think it would be instrumentally better. Hell, James Franco, who plays Harry Osborn. I think he was one of the pe few he was one of the people on the list for Spider-Man. If he had gotten the role, I think it would have been better. In my, I don't like Tobey Maguire. I could deal with him in a movie like Pleasantville. He did a good job in that. But here, he's just dopey. He's the derp face, punchable face, the 
he seems like Opie Taylor from Andrew Griffith. Every time I see him, I'm like, where's Aunt B? Are my pies ready? You tell Aunt B to get my pies ready, I'm going to tit your ass. They don't, I don't give you permission to sneeze, Opie. Or I'll tit your ass back to Mayberry. So I watch it and I go, I don't care for his voice. I don't care for his attempts at wisecracks, the very few that there are. He just, don't be McCryer. He fucking cries in all three of these movies so goddamn much. I'm like, is your tampon hurting? Is it that time of the month for every month of your life? Stop bitching. Stop being a spider pussy. Just sometimes just him off as a fucking pussy. Just, don't be McCryer. That's my name for to, to be or not to be McCryer. I didn't even do that on purpose. Dopey McCry, he just looks like dope. I know he's supposed to be a nerd and a deep. I understand that, but he that continues through all the films, in my opinion. I just rewatched all three. Thank you, Nick, once again for the PayPal request. It was a generous amount. I appreciate it. Danny Elfman's score is not the worst score ever. It's just. When Spider-Man first got on the screen, for me, it should have had an iconic score in the vein of Superman and Batman scores. I don't feel that's the way. Like, yeah, I just watch the films. I can't hum the music in my head. I can hum even Man of Steel. As much as I hate that movie, I really like the score to that and the theme. Da, 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 da. And Superman, Batman. Even the Flash TV show for the 90s. That's Danny Elfman. I mean, but the the music for this, it's not horrible, but it's not as memorable as I guess to some people. Uh, Great. I mean, the movie, its tone, its flow, I should say, is a bit hurt because it's got to go through the origin story. And that's usually the, the problems with these type of stories is that you got to go through the origin. So it feels like one movie and then you get to your villain. So it seems like you got two movies in one. So you got the origin story, movie one, and then Norman Osborn, Green Goblin, movie two. But Tobey Maguire, I know a lot of people liked him, and it's his, their favorite Spider-Man. But to me, he's just uh, goober. He's just, I just fucking goober. He just seems like fucking goober. I don't know how to put it. Just a fucking goober, a fucking deep. I know he's supposed to be a deep, but he's just a fucking annoying deep. Just fucking, he, he, to me, he, he he's my biggest problem. He's one of my biggest problems. I just I don't like him as an actor. Oh, like if there's a list of actors I don't care for, Tobey Maguire's on that list. Even in other films, other than Pleasantville, the the other films I don't care for him in. Wonder Boys didn't care for him in it. Just not a fan of the guy. You know, if it was the '80s, we'd love to have seen Michael J. Fox. So I would have been open to a young Christian Slater. Like in the, you know, similar to what he did in films like Cuffs. Uh, young John Cusack I would have been fine with. Jake Gyllenhaal, which he was going to do Spider-Man 2 when there's a, there's a point that Tobey Maguire might not be back because of back problems. Problems with his back. James Franco, I would have been, I would have preferred more. There's just so many other actors I would have preferred over to Dopey McCryer. I just, fuck. Just fucking crying all the goddamn time in these fucking movies. Fucking. And then Kirsten Dunst, who I call Fire Crotch, just nag and nag and bitch and bitch and bitch. She's the most tolerable in part two, but man, by part three, she's fucking. She might as well have a goddamn SM outfit underneath her and a goddamn whip in her back pocket. Tell me you love me. Aren't that great? Wasn't it great? Am I great? Shut the fuck up, Kirsten Tunt. 
Well, that's rude. I don't give a fuck. I don't like her as a... I'm like, so these are... You know how I feel about those two people? As characters, maybe it's the way they're written as well, to be fair. But to be Dopey McCryer and Kirsten... I know people don't like me using that word. See you next Tuesday, but... You know how I feel about them? I won't take a piss. Don't believe me? That's how I feel about them. That's how I fucking feel about them. Tony McGuire and Kirsten Dunst are unlikable fucking characters. Unlikable fucking characters. I don't give a shit about their love story. I don't give a shit about them at all. Because they just annoy the fucking piss out of me. I'm not even going to cut that out. I'm not even going to cut it out. In case you didn't hear any of that. I was saying how I don't care for Kirsten Dunst. I don't care for Dopey McCryer. I don't care for their love story. I don't think they have chemistry with each other. And that might not be as bad as say Amadala and your Padme and fucking Anakin and the Star Wars prequels but I still don't care for these two characters and their love story and their lovey-dovey and the relationship they got about as much charisma as the fucking Manson family I just don't give a shit about the love story I don't care if they get together I don't care about Mary Jane when I think of Mary Jane I think of her as a spitfire strong you know, independent gal who's like you hit the jackpot tiger and Oh, hey, you got a camera? Let's take some pictures of our own. Naughty style. And she did that in one of the comics. Because I remember vividly reading. I'm like, oh, wow, cool. This is Mary Jane. She's cool. But here she just... Tepid. Shallow. Damsel in distress. Funny how they couldn't think of anything better than, oh, she's going to be the damn so in every fucking movie. Not just the first, not just the second, all three fucking films, the same goddamn thing they did. Kirsten Dunst obviously had nothing else to offer for that character. And I, I could deal with her in movies like Jumanji, but I, I'm not a big fan of her. If somehow you could take Tom Holland from the new films and say Emma Stone who played Gwen Stacy in the Amazing Spider-Man films, and you put those two in these movies with some better writing, I think you have something great. I mean, the first half of the film is the origin. There's some good Sam Raimi artistic touches and direction, although if I want to see Sam Raimi do a comic book style movie I'll just go watch Dark Man which I enjoy a lot and I know Dark Man was a he wanted to do the shadow they wouldn't let him do it so okay I'll make my own Dark Man I know he, Sam Raimi's doing Doctor Strange too. I like Doctor Strange I like the actors so right there at least I like him as Doctor Strange more than Derpy here as Spider Dick but you know, the costume looks cool. The For the origin story, I like Cliff Robertson as Uncle Ben. I like the way they utilize the Uncle Ben stuff, which is much better than Iron Man Jr. in the new movies, to be fair. Not just because that's how it is in the comics, but it just works better for the moral of the character. The great power, great responsibility. You can say that's corny and not use it because you're too cool for school like a fool. But no, that's part of the fucking character. That's an important part of the character. That kind of 
the soul of the character, the whole Uncle Ben, great power, great responsibility thing. I mean, if, if we just see Batman's family killed 85 fucking times in various sources, you could put that in the new movies, the Uncle Ben and that line. How many times have we seen Batman's family, his parents get fucking killed? Every goddamn time? <laughs> and then some? Whether it be cartoons, movies, direct-to-video anime films? <clears throat> Shitloads. So with that said, uh, there's some good directorial moments. Sam Raimi knows how to film the action sequences. They're not confusing. They're not... Um, I don't give... Well, I think the third film, even the action scenes aren't that great. But at least the first two... It's not badly directed. Like camera work. Like trying to showcase Spider-Man swinging through the city. Although the effects are fairly dated. Granted, it's 2002, but... The CGI does not hold up well. It doesn't. I do like seeing Macho Man Randy Savage. When Spider-Man's like, you get spit. Oh, I have this stuff here. At three minutes of playtime. Bonesaw is ready. So you know, I'm a sucker for Macho Man Randy Savage. Bruce Campbell has a fun cameo who gives him the name Spider-Man. And like the first half of the film, other than not liking Tobey Maguire or Kirsten Dunst, some of the humor is cornball. Like cheesy. I hate, you, you know how much I hate using the word cheesy, but the humor in these films you just call as cheesy. Even from a guy who hates that fucking word, because to me, that's a her, that's just a word that gets overused a lot. And people use it. Oh, I love this film. It's cheesy, but isn't that putting it down? Yeah, but it's cheesy. But isn't that putting the movie down? So do you like it or not? Well, uh, it's just an overused term. But yeah, the cheesy cornball, which yeah reminds me of something like a fifties. Leave the Beaver, Andy Griffith, but then a 2000s aesthetic. I know it sounds stupid, but I don't know how else to word it. And his Uncle Ben dies, and which you don't be seeing that a shit ton. You know, him crying like a bitch in heat. Which is one of my biggest issues with these fucking films is that fucking. The, not just. Toby Maguire's acting, but the way the character is written just comes off as a punk bitch. So, you know, after the intro, which is the first half of the film, then you had the Norman Osborn and Willem Dafoe. I'm sorry, I liked Willem Dafoe as an actor. I liked him in films like Platoon, Clear and Present Danger. Both films I reviewed in the past couple months for. Patreon reviews. This I would put more in the category speed two for his performances. We're just hamming it up over the top, especially the scene where he's talking to himself in the mirror and they're doing the Jekyll and Hyde thing, but it just comes off as, you know, the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> It just comes off as ridiculous and silly and goofball. And then the costume of Green Goblin is fucking awful. Like, the Spider-Man costume looks great. Green Goblin looks fucking stupid. I'm sorry, looks fucking stupid, looks fucking dumb, looks fucking laughable. And I just don't care for it. I'm sorry, I don't care for that costume. It looks like a giant action figure or something from fucking Power Rangers. Especially on YouTube, you can find someone who did... They actually did a fucking mask that looked like the Green Goblin. But they didn't use it for whatever the fuck all reason. Oh, well, don't give don't give me any logic bullshit. Because if you don't go that route, well, logically, how would... No. Okay, then what's the logic of making a goddamn weapon, but it looks like a fucking goblin head that they have in the movie? What was the point of that in the first place? 
for shits and giggles. So, I mean, if you really don't want to bring logic in the table, here's a full fucking debt, full house, bitches. And Kirsten Dunst just comes off as a fucking... Where's her fiery, like, spit fire... She's a spitball. That's not the term, but... Kirsten Dunst doesn't have any of that. James Franco... I like him as an actor. I liked him in films, Pineapple Express, The Disaster Artist, which I reviewed on here, Your Highness. He's given nothing to do. He's given not much of a character in these movies. That's why I think he would have done better as Spider-Man, because at least there'd be something more to do. Maybe to take the material and make it a little bit better with his acting. But his Harry Osborne, again, there's really nothing much for him to to play with like I said Willem Dafoe he's hamming it up a lot the action scenes when I was talking about action scenes I guess I was more talking about part 2 which I think are much improved action scenes compared to this I mean there's a couple moments where Spider-Man did some nice uses, usages of his agility but the first time we see a montage, we see like barely jack shit, which was disappointing as fuck. I, even as a kid, when I saw this in the theater, I'm like, I'm waiting to see Spider-Man. And then this montage happens. And then you didn't see any Spider-Man. You just see newspapers, newspapers. Okay, fuck the newspapers. We're Spider-Man. And then you see little bits of him using his agility and poses, but not nearly enough. Not nearly enough. Until he starts fighting Green Goblin. Like the scene where he's in the burning building. And he's maneuvering around. Although even in that scene. It's, I don't understand how. Okay Green Goblin is trying to be a woman. With this shawl or this blanket. Why is it when he turns around. There's a woman scream sound effect. I, I don't know why there's a sound effect of that. I have no fucking idea. I don't do it. I, I don't fucking know why. Let's see what else. Oh, why the fuck? I had it. What the hell? I'm trying to think. What the fuck was it? There's another thing. I'm like, what? God, now I'm, I'm drawing a blank here. God damn it. That's another thing. I'm like, why the fuck did it do that? Like, where did this whole thing with Willem Dafoe's character, hey, Spider-Man, maybe we can join together and then knock out Gaz? This is Adam West, Batman and Robin. And then when they're on the rooftop, it looks like two action figures talking with each other. Join me, Spider-Man. And what, you'll rule the fucking galaxy together? Next thing you don't say, I am your father. That's what it fucking seemed like he was head and it just corny, corny, corny. Cornball. Fuck. Oh, another weird thing that Sam Raimi does in these Spider-Man films, his usage of extras. I know this is gonna sound stupid. But in all three films, he always has people, the extras doing the weirdest shit. But I'm I, I can't remember which film these are in. But like one woman going, eh, eh, and then going up to the camera, ah, screaming. Or there's a web and a girl goes, it's a web. No fucking shit, Mrs. Sherlock fucking Holmes. And then Spider-Man, yeah, go Spider-Man. Who the fuck are you? I don't need your goddamn commentary. Shut the fuck up. The f who fuck asked you for your opinion? And all these other guys and just... Oh, in the montage with the newspapers. It was more about just people talking. I'm fucking New York. We're a fucking Spider-Man. 
they didn't talk like that, but still, it's like, what the fuck did Spider Man go to fucking school? Gives a shit. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Now, there's no one out there, but it's just like, what the fuck? What the fuck? So, you just, uh, noise the piss out of me from time to time, god damn it. But anyway, uh, I'm trying to think what the hell happened. <laughs> oh, there's another weird thing during an action scene, the parade scene. That's what it is. Like the, there's a parade scene and then a woman goes, oh, Spider-Man. Like, who the fuck are you? It's like, golly gee willikers. That's what it seemed like. I just, goofy, cornball, cheesy with a capital cheese, man. God damn it. And then the stupid fucking kid just standing there while this goddamn thing's falling on him. And the kid's like, move your ass. Get the fuck out of the way. Move your fucking ass, kid. I'm going to take you, take you through a fucking field goal. No, that? That's shitty parenting. If your kid's too fucking stupid, have him stay the fuck home. Or get some hooked on fucking phonics. Or weird shit. Like there's a pumpkin bomb. Mary Jean's right here. A bunch of army guys are right here. This is about this distance. It vaporizes everybody over there. But she's perfectly fine. I don't know how the fuck that works. You know, even there's some moments of action, but I think it's much better in the second one. Much better here. There's some action technical aspects. Certain shots that he replicates from the comics as he does in the second film. But even the finale, when you watch it again, it's not much. I mean, you have almost a scene from Batman Forever. Remember when they're like, hey, you want Nicole Kidman or Robin here? Do you want Mary Jane or a shitload of kids? And of course, he saves both. And like I said, the CGI doesn't hold up the best in today's age. Right, it's 2002, but still. I still remember the, the teaser that you can find on YouTube where it was him catching a helicopter between the, the, the Twin Towers. Which I don't know if that was going to be part of the movie. Maybe it was. I don't know. But because of 9-11, of course, they didn't do it. But... <sighs> But I'm trying to think. Oh, the finale. Really is just Power Ranger Man. Because to me that that's not Green Goblin. Doesn't looks fucking shitty. And then Willem Defoe just overacting. Ready to fucking what you gonna spit him to death? Just kidding the shit out of Spider Man. Kidding the shit out of him some more. Kidding the shit out of him some more. And Spider-Man does like a, put some burts on him, punches him a couple times, and gets the fuck out of the way. And he's like, oh, well, that's it? That's kind of lame. And there's a drinking game to be had if you watch all three of these movies. Drink whenever Spider-Man takes his mask off, or most of the mask is damaged. You're going to be really fucking drunk. Especially if you add in how many times he fucking cries. You'll die of alcohol poisoning. So, and then stupidly, Spider-Man listens to Willem Dafoe. Don't tell Harry. I'm like, you could just leave him there because he murdered a bunch of fucking people. And um, yeah, I know you're a nice guy, but you know tough shit 
you know, shit happens. But no, by doing that, and then Harry starts, oh, Spider-Man killed my dad, which leads to a little bit in part two, and then part three is like, you know, all that headache for really nothing, because he still found out anyway, still find out what his, who his dad was, and it accomplished really nothing by doing that. It's like Spider-Man you just left his ass there. Sorry. I like some of the soundtrack. I like the song Hero by Chad Kroger. But I actually don't mind Nickelback. So there you go. And I think Chad Kroger was with Nickelback. But I like that song. A hero to save us. I'm not going to get in their way. I, I, I enjoy that song back in the day. I enjoy it to this day. It's not because... When I first saw this back in the day, I didn't mind it. It's kind of like the the 2007 CGI Team and T film. They're both films that when I saw in the theaters, I didn't mind. But there's certain films that hold up, some that don't. I can still sit here and absolutely love, sincerely love, Twister with Bill Paxton, which apparently he was the four, he was the front runner for. Green Goblin, which I would have much rather preferred Bill Paxton than Willem Dafoe, to be honest. I like Willem Dafoe as an actor, but he didn't work, in my opinion, for this. Bill Paxton I would love to have seen. But I still love Twister. I still love Independence Day. I still love so many films from the 80s that I've talked about repeatedly. From Commando, to The Running Man, to Cobra, to the early you know Rambo films, to Tango and Cash, to John Carver's The Thing, Conan the Barbarian... I don't know, pick a year. From Blue Thunder to Outland with Sean Connery to the Indiana Jones films to Lethal Weapon, Die Hard films, the first four. But even Die Hard 5, that was a film I, 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 wanted to, I really wanted to like. Some films, age like. some films age like wine and some films age like piss. And believe it or not, I'm going to give a lot of credit to Spider-Man 2. Because the next review is Spider-Man 2, and I didn't hate the film. In fact, if I had to be honest, it probably is the best typical Spider-Man film. If I had to be fair. Because I don't like Tobey Maguire and Carson Dunst, but it does do a lot of things right in the second film. To be fair. So is that just me wanting to hate a film because it's popular? But I, I think the origin is clunky and it's pacing. Because it's doing an origin, it just it does feel like two movies in one. It's tone. There's some like says some cringeworthy humor. And there's again just that cornball aesthetic. There's a a hammy performance by Willem Dafoe. Two leads that I don't feel had any chemistry. I don't care for the love story and the lovey-dovey aspects. Action scenes that looking back are not as fantastic or as memorable compared to various other films, whether it be Blade or Blade Two or Constantine. I'm just naming the less popular ones. But they're films I enjoy. Let alone Superman, Superman 2, Batman. Yes, even Batman Returns. I enjoy all those movies much more than this. And... Granted, some aesthetic little points. Like, oh, Spider-Man's able to punch. Has a good costume. Spidey sense seems fairly intact in this. I actually like the organic web shooters. I never had a problem with that. I always thought, hey, that's a pretty cool idea. I'd be fine if they made that cannon. I would. I think that'd be pretty cool. It's, it's not. It's fucking guy being baby where you're at to spy. You would just die in real life. Real life is not in the equation here. So I'm fine with the organic shooters. I think that's pretty cool, actually. Trying, 
trying to think there's other stuff to mention. I'm sure there are, but... You know, I like the actors who play Aunt May. J.T. Simmons is a lot of fun as J. Jonah Jameson. Uh, Ted Raimi. It was always nice to see Ted Raimi in there, who's in J. Jonah Jameson's office. But Kirsten Dunst, Mary Jane, is a wet blanket. That's the best way to describe her. She's a gigantic fucking wet blanket, pretty much a useless damsel in distress character in all the fucking films. And by the third film, it's completing our fucking nagging bitch. Tell me you love me. How about you tell me to kiss my ass? No, you can kiss my ass. Not me kiss my own ass. You kiss my ass, bitch. And then Dopey McCryers. I might stop crying. Stop being a bitch. Stop being a wuss. Stop blah, 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 and stop having your derp face. You dopey looking motherfucker and acting motherfucker. Fucking do not like Toby to be or not to be Maguire. I'm sorry. I don't. Ugh. So many other actors that you could put in there. And if someone else played Spider-Man, I probably would have the others. I would have been like, it's a flaw film. But I really liked it. But your lead character in a Spider-Man movie is pretty fucking important. And a lot of people love Tony McGuire. I don't. I can't relate to him. I don't see him as an everyman. Just like I don't see Opie Taylor from the Andrew Deere Griffith show as just a... I see as a kid that's what a kid would be like in that time period. And the small town of Mayberry. Not a kid uh, anybody today. Or even... 80s or 90s or whatever I see the monster squad I'm like yeah those kids seem like normal kids here I mean I know I'm alone in that this gonna make people mad but that's just by I don't think these film I don't think that the film holds up well uh, I think it's a bit, I think it's overrated. I do. I think the first Spider-Man is overrated. Spider-Man 2, I can understand. Spider-Man 2, I don't have as many issues compared to 1 and especially fucking 3. But Spider-Man 2, I could deal with. Spider-Man 1, though, is pretty fucking overrated. I mean, for the time, for, it's a traditional Spider-Man. I get it, but... There's much room for improvement. Hell, I think Michael Keaton and Jay Jenal did a better job as villains in the new Disney films than Willem Dafoe did. I don't like the Spider-Man can't fucking punch and Iron Man Jr. in the new Spider-Man films, but I like Tom Holland as an actor. His presence, his dialogue delivery. And fuck, he doesn't cry as much as Dopey McCryer. But the same flip side, I like that Uncle Ben and the origin story is pretty damn truthful to the source material in the right way. And I do appreciate that at least. So again, like you just combine them. Combine all this shit. And then we got something here. But that's just my opinion. But either way, thanks for watching. Take care. And we'll see you in the next video. Later.